Hi everyone, welcome back to Economics A-Level here on YouTube. This video is going to look at market clearing and how market clearing happens. Previously we looked at states of excess demand and excess supply. Excess demand being where there is more demand at a given price than there is supply, and excess supply being where supply is greater than demand at a given price. And both these positions are where the free market does not clear and where we have a state of disequilibrium. So for market clearing we need to know two things. What market clearing is, is where equilibrium price in a market is reached. In other words, where all of demand at that price is met by supply at that price, with no leftover demand or supply compared to each other. To look at how the free market clears, remember that we start with the position of disequilibrium where the market isn't clear of either excess demand or excess supply. Remember, for excess demand, there is too much demand at that price price at a given price, so here one pound compared to the amount of supply at that price. In other words, there's a shortage of supply compared to the amount of demand. According to theory, the free market through the price mechanism will then clear this excess demand. And this is going to happen by buyers bidding each other up in order to try and get the good or service. If you take, for example, me, let's say that I've got three pounds that can buy the good that is currently priced at one pound, and I know there's a lot of demand for that good, and I also know that my friend Bob, for example, has only got two pounds with which he can buy that good. If I really want that good, I'll go to the seller and say, look, I'll give you three pounds because I will know that I will be able to secure that good ahead of my friend Bob. And that is what the bidding up process means. Buyers in, and consumers in the market will compete with each other in order to try and get this product, and they will do that by offering higher prices based upon the incomes that they have with which they can afford the product. And this then is what we call demand rationing. Demand gets rationed to those who can afford it. This is one of the functions of price, along with incentive and signaling, which we'll look at in a separate video. At the same time, supply is also incentivized because at a higher price, suppliers are going to make a greater amount of profit, so therefore more suppliers will be willing to enter the market now. Now they see that the price for this product is going up and that there's demand for it. So you'll see on the graph then that we started originally at an excess demand of 30, 50 demand compared to 20 supply at the price of a pound. And now through this bidding up and rationing of demand process and the incentivizing of supply, supply has expanded from 20 to 27, demand has contracted because the price is raised from 50 to 44. So now we've only got a 17 excess demand and we're closer to the free market clearing at equilibrium price. If this process continues, we will eventually hit that free market equilibrium price and we will say when that happens that the market is clear of any excess demand and any shortage of supply because at that given price, £4, demand equals supply. So the free market is clear of any disequilibrium and excess in demand and shortage in supply. Similar analysis happens when we look at excess supply. So when there's excess supply at a given price, here £7, there is a greater amount of supply at that price compared to the demand. So there's a surplus in supply, we say. What will happen in this situation is that suppliers will eventually see that they're not selling all of their stock that they've got sitting on their shelves or in their warehouses. And suppliers, being rational economic agents, will go, well, hang on, we've paid a cost to make this stuff. So here, in this case, it's strawberries. They've had labour costs to pick it, to grow it, to plant it, fertiliser costs, pesticides probably as well, all those kind of costs. And if that stock goes unsold or it rots, then that's a pure loss for the supplier. So the suppliers are going to go, well, in order to get rid of this stock, we need to lower our prices. By lowering their prices, that's going to cause an expansion of demand because now demand is incentivized. The product falls into a great number of consumers and households' budgets and more people can afford it. So demand will expand. Supply will also now contract because some of that stock has been sold and suppliers have stopped making that level or that quantity of stock because they know they can't sell that much of it. This will also disincentivize some suppliers from entering this market, causing some to possibly leave because they know now that they can't charge a price of £7 and get the level of profit that they were expecting. So you can see then we reduce the amount of excess supply from 54, which is the original excess supply, 60 minus 6, to 35, which is now 50 minus 15. There's 50 supplied at the price of six six pound and 15 purchase at the price of six pound. So there's still excess supply, but we're moving closer to the free market equilibrium and market clearing. 
This process then continues until the free market equilibrium is reached. Suppliers will keep lowering their prices to get rid of excess stock so that eventually all of their supply is bought by consumers and we reach the market equilibrium price of £4 where demand and supply are equal. And the market is therefore clear of any excess of supply and a shortage of demand in this case. So this free market clearing theory is all based around classical or neoclassical economic theory and that theory is that free market forces tend to lead to clearing markets, especially when we get to the long run. Some economists though argue this is not always the case. For example, labour markets with an enforced national minimum wage are an example, they say, of where the free market doesn't clear because the minimum wage is above the free market equilibrium wage rate. Trade union powers also have an influence on distorting markets leading to disequilibrium over time. And other pieces of legislation might have the same effect. For example, the common agricultural policy leads to overproduction and excess supply, leading to long-run disequilibrium in that market. This argument is continued in macroeconomics, where Keynesians argued that in the long run, the free market might not always clear, whereas classical economists believe that in the long run, markets tend towards clearing. So we'll look more at that when we do macroeconomics, especially Keynes versus classical debate. So in the next videos, we're going to look at consumer surplus and producer surplus. So click in the top right hand corner if you want to go to those already. If not, thanks very much for watching. Like, subscribe and leave any comments. And See you in the next video.